In the previous episode, I showed you uh, an, the level curve method for determining the optimal solution. Now, in this episode, I'll show you an alternative method that can uh, that you can use to choose the optimal solution. Um, this method is based on enumerating all corner points. And so, uh, and actually, to understand why we can use it, first of all, see that whatever the level curves, whatever the slope, right? Um, the objective determines the slope, so it was something like this, right? And then we were maximizing, we determined this was the optimal solution. Now, if the level curves were different, for example, if they were like this, right? And then the improvement were this way, then we would go until this solution, right? We would have the highest level curve here. If the level curves were maybe like this, the improvement would be this way, Right? Then we would go until this level curve here, and then this would be the optimal solution. And let's say if there were level curves maybe that looked like this, then we would be going this way, and then we would stop at this point. That would be the optimal solution. You see, whatever the level curves, the, when we move to, towards the improving values, we move to the last feasible solution. This last feasible solution will always be one of the corner points. Okay, so because of this, we know it is enough to enumerate all corner points to find an optimal solution. Now, there is an exception to this, which is um, if the feasible region is unbounded from one of the sides, we cannot just enumerate corner points. We have to see in which direction the level curves take us. Because you see, if the region was unbounded on one side, and if the level curves moved towards the unbounded side, then, then we wouldn't have an optimal solution. That's why we have to, we can only use this method in the case of bounded region. Now in this example we have a region which is bounded from all sides, so let me demonstrate how we can use the, the um, corner point enumeration method. So first of all notice that there are five corner points uh, in this feasible region. It's this point, this point, this point, that's point number three, number four, and there is also this corner point. Now you might say, well, this is uh, zero, zero. If we maximize the profit, we're not going to choose this. But there are cases where this would be the optimal solution um, in some example problems. So don't forget in the corner point method to always enumerate all corner points. So. Uh, what are the coordinates of those corner points? Now, never read them from the chart, always compute them. But if you remember, when we were drawing the labor constraint, we noticed that we're actually crossing. The, the, the labor constraint is going through a point which has coordinates 1, 7, 4, 0. We've already computed this before, right? Uh, another easy point is this, of course, 0, 0. And if you remember when we were drawing tubing, we noticed also that we're going through 0, 180. We knew these points, right? Now the other, the remaining two corner points, one has to compute them by solving sets of equations. This one is an intersection of pumps and labor constraints. So this is first and second constraint when they are converted into equalities. And we've already solved this um, in our previous methods. I'm not going to repeat the solution we found then that it was 122.78 and uh, there is still this point so we still don't know what this point coordinates are and so we have to compute this and this is intersection of the pumps constraint changed into equality x1 plus x2 equals 200 and tubing, tubing is the third constraint 12x1 plus 16x2 equals 2880 and we have to solve this as a set of equations um, equalities so I can take for example x1 from this equation is 200 minus x2 and plug it into the second so we will have 12 times 200 minus x2 plus 16 x2 equals 2880 and from that I have minus 12x2 plus 16x2 that is 4x2 equals and I have 2880 and that 
12 times 200 is 2400 subtract 2400 from this you will get 480 so that is x2 equals 120 and that means x1 200 minus x2 that must be 80 so I have a point here which is 80 120 so I've already enumerated all five corner points now the question that remains is how much profit do those corner points give us so that's that this one is the easiest right if we have 0 for x1 0 for x2 the profit will be 0 0 times 350 and 0 times 300 the profit here will be 350 times 174 and plus uh, 300 times 0 that will be 0 so that is let's use a calculator 350 times 174 will give me 60,900 right um, this we've already calculated in our previous method with the level curve method so we know it is 66,000 100 this one we still need to calculate that's 350 times 80 plus 300 times 120 and so that is 350 times 80 that's 28,000 plus 300 times 120 that's 36,000 so that is equal to 50 64 thousand right so we have 64 thousand and in this one it's 350 times 0 plus 300 times 180 so that is 300 400 500 uh, 54,000 right so now if you look at these values which of them is the highest right we're maximizing the profit we're trying to maximize the profit so we're trying to ask ourselves which of those gives us the highest profit is it 54,000 64,000 66,100 60,900 or 0 right out of those values the highest is this so that is right this is the maximum and therefore this is the optimal solution so uh, this method of course gives us the same solution as as the level curves method by enumerating corner points we've determined that the same optimal solution is 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 the solution of this problem so we have to produce 122 aqua spas and 78 hydroluxes to obtain a maximum profit of $66,100.